Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to talk to you on a very important topic, and that concerns the United States of America. America, as you all know, is the number one power in the world, and nobody can match America in terms of its military reach and its military efficacy. But unfortunately, the Americans have been at the receiving end in a number of campaigns and battles, and uh, they have been suffering some catastrophic defeats like in Afghanistan. But yet, I don't think the Americans have learned anything from their defeats. On the contrary, they are committing the same mistakes again and again, and the net result is going to be perhaps something very disastrous for the Americans. Now, why should this happen? I've been wondering about it. Now, there's an old saying from the Norse myths, you know, which I very fond of, that those whom the gods wish to destroy, they make them mad. Now, Norse myths are myths, and uh, one can relish reading them. They're not a gospel truth, but some of the sayings can be made applicable to the modern age. And this particular saying, which I've just quoted, is applicable to the Americans. Now, America, the number one superpower in the world, has got itself entangled in a number of places. And one really wonders how the American political leadership has been so foolish. The first thing we must remember is that there is a Russia-China axis which has been created and basically created by the Americans themselves. Now, you can't deny that. Now, one of the principles of diplomacy is that you do not allow two of your enemies to join hands against you and you must divide them. And the Americans should have divided the Russians and the Chinese and not carried out such activities which put the Russians in the arms of the Chinese. And now a monolith military alliance has been created which I can tell you cannot be defeated because America doesn't have the manpower to match these two giants. Russia technologically superior and China militarily having almost 3 million men in arms. And who are the American allies to face this massive uh, mammoth? Japan, Australia, England. I mean, there are no great shakes as world powers. They do have technology. But as I told you, and as everyone knows, the famous saying of Field Marshal Mike Montgomery of El Alamein, what did he say? He said, come what may, you need the infantry soldier to hold the ground. And that is the problem which these countries are going to face if they have a conflict with China. If there's a nuclear conflict, of course, that will be the end of the Americans, Western civilization, the world itself, perhaps Russia and China could survive because of their massive size. But the countries of Western Europe will be wiped out. So I don't think the Americans would be interested in a nuclear exchange. They would like to fight a conventional war. In that case, they are, cannot win. Now they have entangled themselves in so many places. The first place they've entangled themselves is in Ukraine, then in Gaza, and then they're facing a lurking danger in the South China Sea, where China is getting belligerent day by day and has laid claim to the entire South China Sea and also to the island of Formosa or Taiwan, as we say. And at every place, the Americans have blundered. Blundered is they have gone into a blind alley and they don't know how to get out of it. I'll discuss each of these three hotspots and what America is going to do. It will be uh, a lengthy video, but I'm sure you'll like it. Let's look at the Eastern Pacific, for example. Now, China has laid claim to the entire South China Sea and its resources. They have made some man-made islands and made airfields there, positioned military hardware. At the same time, I will remind you of a statement by President Duterte of the Philippines. He had said, 
that this Chinese entry into the South China Sea had been approved by America from the time of Bill Clinton. And if America was serious about halting the Chinese, what they should have done? They could have positioned five aircraft carriers there and China would be over by the shouting. They didn't do it. And they thought they were playing a great game by making China their friend. On the contrary, they poured in, poured in billions of dollars of investment, technology, you name it. And they have a trade, uh, overall trade of almost six to seven hundred billion dollars heavily weighted in favor of China. And tomorrow the way trade is stopped, the country to suffer is going to be America. So, gentlemen, America missed the bus way back in 63. That was the time when China went nuclear and President Johnson was sitting on his haunches. But then I don't blame him because he, he was advised, well, you know, let China become nuclear, doesn't matter. They're going to be on our side. They're not going to be on the American side, I can tell you that. And now it's the reverse. Even the island of Formosa has been gifted by China, to, uh, by America to China. This island was occupied by the Japanese in the year 1900 and for about 50 years it was part of Japan. But after the defeat of the Japanese in the Second World War, uh, the atomic bombs, this island was handed over to China. And ultimately, Chiang Kai-shek with his motley crowd, after he had been defeated by the communists, went and took refuge here. China has done reverse engineering. China has done their homework very well. And now they are the second biggest economy in the world. And at the same time, massive threat to America. And I don't think the Americans have got anybody to face them. That's the reason they would like to entice India into it, so that, you know, they can get the manpower. But if Modi is wise, he will not fight the American war against China. Now let's look at what happened in Ukraine. Ukraine was part of the expansion of NATO. Way back in 92, Bill Clinton had told President Yeltsin, who had applied to join NATO, don't worry friend, we are going to look after you. And he promised him NATO will not expand eastwards. This is there in black and white. And yet by 98, NATO had taken all over the East European countries, the smaller countries, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, all became members of NATO. And ultimately the aim was to expand NATO further and incorporate Ukraine as part of NATO. So Russia has finished. The aim was very simple, to finish Russia as a military power for the next 100 years so that the hegemony of the Americans will remain. But as you say, there's a many slip between the cup and the lip, you know. And that's no fact. This was good on paper, but practically, the war has dragged on for two years, and victory for Ukraine is elusive. They're losing the war, as far as I understand. And now the Americans are compounding the issue by giving another $61 billion of weapons and aid to Ukraine to fight Russia. I don't think the Americans could have been that foolish. Russian economy is thriving despite all the sanctions that the Americans put on it and the Russians are winning. And ultimately, I don't see how it can remain as a conventional war for any length of time. Because if the Americans think that they can keep on catching the Russian bear by the tail, it's not a good thing to do. Now, my dear friends will understand that if you catch a grizzly bear by the tail, you know what's going to happen. Well, you can try it and the grizzly will teach you a lesson you won't forget. And that goes for Russia. Russia did a lot of mistakes earlier. They should have wrapped up the war inside 60 days. But they didn't do it. And they took it as a limited military engagement and that result is the Ukrainians were able to get their resources together, got help from America, and they threw the Russians out in the first phase, when the Russians had to retreat from Kiev and Kharkiv. They came back in the Donbass region, but then that's the second attempt. And though they have some land which they occupied, they haven't won the war. And the Americans are now at the end of the rope. How much of weaponry, how much of money are they going to sink into Ukraine? They've already sunk billions of dollars. 
but it doesn't go into the American brain that look, you are depleting your own coffers. Your own coffers are going away. If you remember the Hindu god of wealth, Kubel, even his coffers became empty and he had to ask Vishnu, okay, I have no money, my coffers are empty, please help me. America heading the same way. And I'm very sorry to note that Americans don't seem to understand anything at all. Next, let's look at the, the latest hotspot, and that is Gaza. Here on, again, the Americans have a muddle of thinking. They're supporting uh, Israel. At the same time, they want to make some gestures to the Arab that, look, we are not all that bad. And this is followed up with the very stupid thing which they have done. They've applied sanctions onto one of the regiments of the Israeli army. Obviously, Israel is furious. But then Israel is dependent on America. So all they can do is make some noise here and there. That's what all. But at the same time, America has vetoed a resolution to give recognition to the Gaza Strip to the Palestinian Arabs, so that it's status quo. And now, America remains at the moment as the only supporter of Israel. But it is the sport that matters. It is the biggest power in the world. At the same time, the Americans now don't want to antagonize Iran. And you can well imagine how a great power like America has been groveling before the Iranians and telling them, look, the recent Israeli attack on you has nothing to do with us. We are not supporting Israel. Why should America develop cold feet on all this? I mean, it beats my imagination. And of course, the Iranians are scared of the Americans, I can tell you. That is why, as far as I understand, they had given a hint to it, the Americans that they're going to launch the attack on Israel. And they had selected only some military targets. But the fact of the matter is that the Iranian drones and missiles and rockets of such uh, quality which was not having the ECCM, with the result they were all shot down. And it's a record. There are over 313 missiles, I think, or rockets and drones. Only one escaped and went and fell in a ditch or something. And then when the Israelis reacted, it's been very terrible. I think they were able to get to Ishwan, which is about the centers of the uh, Iranian nuclear centers. And uh, though they didn't touch the nuclear assets, made it very clear to Iran that look, we can reach here, we can get here the assets also. So Iran has also piped down. But the fact remains that the battle in Gaza is on in a very severe way, and the Israelis are flattening Gaza. And now I see one point. All over the world, there are demonstrations against Israel. There is nothing of that sort in India. Because India realizes the true nature of Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization. And these agitations which are continuing within America, London, Spain, in favor of uh, the Palestinians, I think should be taken with a pinch of salt. There is more to it than meets the eye. And this is part of the anti-Semitic uh, record of the Christian world for the last 2,000 years. You remember that famous character Shiloh was created by Shakespeare. He's supposed to be a Jew who wanted his pound of flesh. It's a very, very uh, telling caricature of a Jew, what the Christian world thinks. And that is why I don't lay any stress on these people holding demonstrations in Madrid, London, and all that in favor of uh, Hamas. Because these fellows don't realize that today if Hamas wins, they're the ones who are going to come hammer and tongs against the Europeans. Look at what the Islamic world is doing in France, in Sweden. They set up their own ghettos where even the police is scared to go. And any of the writing which takes place, uh, the Islamic world people who are the migrants there are at the forefront. They have not integrated with the people of Europe at all. And I sometimes wonder how foolish the Europeans could have been to get these fellows to come and do their menial work. Because now, what's happening is very simple. The European population is declining. I'm talking of declining 
age-wise, the younger people are not there and only the older people are there. That is because the birth rate is somewhere hovering around 1 to 1.2 or 3. Well, you need a birth rate of 2.1 to sustain the population. So that's not happening. That's not happening at all. And what's happening is a decline in the working population of the European nation and they're getting in more of these Islamic chaps from the war-torn countries and they are signing their doom. I wonder if people have seen a video, you know, which was uh, uh, which had the uh, Imam of uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and he'd gone on record and said that it is the duty of the European men to go to Europe to fertilize the European women. I mean, one can well think about it. So, there is a real danger that another 150 or 200 years, Europe could very well turn into an Islamic dominated region. Unless, of course, like some of the countries in Eastern Europe have put up their shutters against them, it is done. But countries like England, Germany, and France, which are the powerhouses, have done nothing like that. And they're still living in a dream world, you know. Americans similarly living in a dream world. And I don't think there's much of a future for America. I have discussed the three conflicts. They, they're confused in Gaza. They are supporting Ukraine, but they don't know why. And how long they're going to fight, they don't know. In the South China Sea, they have to face China. They are unable to face China. And that is the reason they want that the Gaza conflict that dies down and there's no fight between Iran and Israel so that America can concentrate all their strength on the Eastern Pacific. In this entire scenario, there is a role for India. Unfortunately, the Indian leadership also is sitting on the fence like Humpty Dumpty. So they don't know which way to go, which way to go. They are friends with Russia, yes. But Russia is a lie of China, so in case if there's a war between uh, China and India, what's Russia going to do? At the same time, the Americans will definitely come on the side of India in the war with, against China. But then they're not very clear about what they're going to do in Pakistan. Pakistan is cocking a snoop to the Americans, and they have done it so with the recent visit, I think ongoing visit is there of the President of Iran to Pakistan, and the Americans don't seem to be very happy about it. But they deserve it, the Americans, because they've been mollycoddling Pakistan for so many years, for so many decades since 1954, and Pakistan gave them nothing. And even now, I don't think Joe Biden is really clear what he's going to do with Pakistan. So America is now like Gulliver tied to the stake. Now they've put the finger in so many places, you know. They're trying to tame Pakistan. Gaza, there's a battle on. They don't know what to do with Iran. And there's a battle in Ukraine. Russians are not defeated, they're winning. And then you have the Eastern Pacific, where they have some sick looking powers like Japan and Australia to bolster them with the Philippines, with no great shakes as a power, and try and hold China. Well, the horse is only bolted. The Chinese have taken the, the cream from the milk, you know from the American aid which they got, the donation, the investments, and now they're up. China at one time was receiving 50 to 60 billion dollars investment per year from America. And uh, Americans are singing songs all the time, you know. I thought Richard Nixon thought he'd done a great coup when he thought China is going to be on his side when he made that momentous visit to China. But I thought he and Kissinger will be damned in history as the two big clowns we finished off America in time to come. And I'm afraid after the world we haven't had a man who really hold America together. And American democracy, badly flawed. I have nothing much to say about it. There's a plan afoot to somehow see that Donald Trump is defeated by making him persona non grata for the elections. They're framing some criminal charges on him, things going on. And you say it's a democracy? I think it's a farce of democracy. Well, I think, gentlemen, I've given you a picture. I think the Americans have 
become mad is all I can think and they are signing the death warrant. You see what all is happening now all over the globe. America embroiled everywhere in a battle and in the early battle they never won anyway. Are they going to win anything now? I don't think so. We will have to wait and see. In the meanwhile, gentlemen, I hope you like my video. Share it with your friends. Come back for more. And I'll say goodbye and God bless. Thank you.